Nice to hear, The Mr. more we thought about your ideas, the more aware we became of their pungency, of their brevity, well, of their crispness. Well, thank you, sir. It's certainly... You have a genuine talent for slogans. It must be like having an ear for music. Now you take me. I sing flat. And you, on the other hand, are a born sloganeer. It's bread in the bean. Hot ziggity. Well, it's certainly wonderful to hear, Mr. Baxter. I... I kind of got something on my mind, but you've certainly made me feel a lot better. I mean, they're still the same ideas, aren't they? If they were good this afternoon, they're, they're, they're still good. Well, they'd, they'd have to be. They're the same. Of course they are. Of course they are. I'm not quite sure that I have your thought. I mean, if you thought the ideas were good this afternoon, you, you still think they're good, don't you? Well, of course I do. Why? Well, I mean, since they were good and, and they're still good, they have to be good. And then it wouldn't make so much difference, or, or any difference, if I hadn't won the contest, the, the Maxford House contest, would it? Of course it would make a difference. Oh, it would. Well, certainly it would. Why? I'm no genius. I didn't hang on to my father's money by backing my own judgment, you know. I make mistakes every day, sometimes several times a day. I've got a whole warehouse full of mistakes. I should say it would make a difference. You see, I think your ideas are good because they sound good to me. But I know your ideas are good because you won this contest over millions of aspirants. Yes, but you see, Mr. Baxter... It's what you might call commercial insurance. As when a horse wins the derby, you back him for the Preakness. Well, I didn't win it. The Preakness? The contest. I didn't win anything. It was a joke. A joke? That's what they meant it to be anyway. Who did? Some of the fellows. Well, they didn't mean any harm. They just wanted to see how I'd look when I got the news. Well, you tell me their names, and we'll see how they look when I give them some news. I wouldn't care to do that, Mr. Baxter. I... Oh, it doesn't matter. What do you mean, it doesn't matter? After I spend a whole afternoon listening to a lot of baloney, entirely predicated on the winning of this contest, and giving you this office? But how about it's bread and the bean, the blue blood coffee? Well, I don't know. What about it? We'll find that out. There'll be plenty of time for that. But I won't be made a fool of, you understand. I can't go around giving out private offices and private secretaries on the strength of a prank that, personally, I consider far from funny. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going to be kind of hard to face that gang tomorrow morning from the back of that desk. It would be just as hard to face them from in here if you didn't belong here. Uneasy lies the head. He does belong in here, Mr. Baxter. Now, what is the joke this time? He belongs in here because he thinks he belongs in here, because he thinks... Oh, that's he... all very deep dish and highfalutin. But from a practical... It is practical, Mr. Baxter. It's the most practical idea you ever had. He belongs in here because he thinks he has ideas. He belongs in here until he proves himself or fails, and then somebody else belongs in here until he proves himself or fails, and somebody else after that, and somebody else after him, and so on and so on for always. Oh, I don't know how to put it into words like Jimmy could, but... All he wants, all any of them want is a, is a chance to show, to find out what they've got while they're still young and, and burning like a short cut or a stepping stone. Oh, I know they're not going to succeed. At least most of them aren't. They'll all be like Mr. Waterbury soon enough, most of them anyway. But they won't mind it. They'll find something else and they'll be happy because they had their chance. Because it's one thing to muff a chance when you get it, but it's another thing never to have had a chance. His name's already on the door. Well, if anything decided me, that would be it. Oh, Mr. Baxter. Now, you've talked enough. Desks have already been moved, and the name is painted on, as you so skillfully pointed out. So we'll try it for a very short time, you understand? At no advance in salary, you understand. Yes, sir. And for a very short time. Yes, sir. After all, this is a business institution, not a cultural project. Oh, you'll never be sorry, Mr. Baxter. Yes, well, I'm a little bit sorry already, so just let it go at that. 